Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and we had just smoked the camera because those bees are not happy about this weather. I'm not either, and neither is Laurel. Uh, we are fairly wet. Our suits are quite wet. It's been drizzling all day, and it has the last two days as well, but it doesn't matter. We have hundreds of colonies that have to be gone through, and some of them are thinking about swarming, and we can't wait four or five days to get those uh, nice temperatures, especially if you are working during the week and you can only get to it on the weekends and it's rainy, uh, that can be a little bit tricky. So a, a week this time of the year can mean a lot. So real quick, before I get into some colonies, I wanna say um, I'm gonna leave a link down below for this suit. We've been trying them out all last year and this year and Laurel and I really like them. They're easy to put on. Uh, they really do a good job of closing around your boots and uh, I, they're really durable most durable suit that I've seen a lot of reinforcement all right so as you can see these bees are looking at me wondering why in the world I've opened them up there's a pretty good bit of them I'm just going down and checking to see if they are building swarm cells so not in, in these two right here and I am going to throw that back on and then there's this third box and I typically don't run triples um, I just got lazy and didn't take it off last year, and there's there's nothing in there, but good looking hive. They need cut back again, and that means taking a frame of brood or two and a shake or two of bees and making a split with it or boosting a hive that is good but behind. And so we are just going to go into this one. I've got two lids on it. I really don't know why, but I do. And we are going to pop in between. They love that. Give them a little bit of smoke, good bit of weight in that top box. And wow, had some spare apivar and I have those on. I'm gonna to need to pull those out soon. But I'm not seeing any uh, swarm cups being made. That is good. While we're here, let's go ahead and pull those out. They were fixing to hit expiration. I'm not a huge fan of them. As you can see, I have some nails that suspend them in between the frames. We will definitely need to get those out for a little bit before we put on honey supers. And that won't be too far away. Oh goodness. That's what I like to feel though. Good bit of weight right there. And let's just go ahead and uh, pull this back. Boy, those bees look good. Ready to make some honey. We got our frame feeder here. This is a one and a half gallon model by Motherload, and it gives you a lot more room than the two gallons. All right. It's best to start from the edge and work your way inward. However, I, um, I don't want to check that many frames, so I'm scooting all those to the side, and I'm gonna carefully pull up this middle comb right here. Boy, doesn't that look good. We have food up in the corners, just like you'd like to have your honey, and then you have some bee bread up here towards the top, and then you just have all this gorgeous brood down in here and this colony needs to be pulled back. Uh, they are fixing to just explode. This would be a perfect frame to pull, really, because whoever we would give this to is going to get all of these new bees almost immediately because they are just emerging right out of these cells as we speak. And this frame right here, based upon how much brood is covered up on both sides, is probably going to yield somewhere around 4,000 new bees. 4,000, that's pretty awesome. That's about a third of a package, maybe slightly more. All right, so we are going to drop that back in there. We just wanna make sure when we pull out a middle frame that we scoot everything over, because we don't wanna crush a bunch of bees for sure, but we definitely don't wanna roll that queen because uh, mm. she's got some good things going on and I think there's some supers of honey in her future. Well, you're gonna stick this right on back down and. Make sure to shake those bees off, otherwise they will be trapped between the lid and the reflectix. All right, let's go check a couple other ones out. 
So we're to these two hives right here, so it's same song, second verse. And days like this, you definitely like that bee suit and those gloves because the bees are just not playing around. That's one of the biggest problems with the Reflectix is that ants will build up in between. That's any inner cover. If you are a new beekeeper and you see ants in between, that is because your bees can't patrol it. If they, the bees were able to get up here or get in between your inner cover and your outer lid, whether that's a migratory like I use or a telescoping cover, uh, then they could keep those ants out. But that's whenever you have ant issues between the lids, it's just because the bees can't get to it. Wow, looking good, looking good. And I have some apivar here, so we're just going to take that out as well. Just throw it on over. And these bees are looking pretty big. Let's, uh, this is a mother load box right here. If you're wondering what in the world this is. Boy, look at those bees. Let's check and see if we have any cells. Keep in mind, all of these colonies that you're seeing, we have pulled bees from them. And it's just, they need more. Uh, check this cell out right here. So we have this cup and it's looking a little bit wet. We have this one over here. That one's dry. I think most of these are dry, but they look like they're ready any second for that queen. Oh, that one looks more developed right here, and so does that one. Oh, yeah, that one's got some royal jelly in it. Let's check this one out right here. Hmm, dry. I thought for sure that would have something in it, but not quite, but these bees look like they are just a day away from extending those cells out and getting in the swarm mode. They need pulled back. All right, so we've removed the treatment strips and we are going to put that back on. Whew. Don't be like that, girls. I know, I know it's cold today. I don't like it either. All right, so. And uh, these are mother load frames right here. So actually a lot of mother load stuff. I, I really like using USA made stuff. And so uh, I, they drew these combs out in August of last year, which is our robbing season in dirt. They just put a good coat of wax on them. Look at that right there. Woo, that queen's working. There she is right there. Hey, hey. She still got a little bit of the dot left on her. And what a gal. These bees are going to swarm on us soon, though, if we don't do something about it. We've got to pull them back. You're like, Cameron, I don't really have anywhere to go with them. What am I going to do here? Because, you know, I don't have any extra boxes. Can I just cut the, the cells down and can I add some honey supers? And that's, that can help some, but they're really not bringing any nectar right now. Can you imagine once we get a strong nectar flow, what that's going to do the swarm? tendency it is going to go through the roof and they are going to swarm and the best way to alleviate that in my opinion is to pull the bees back and make a split it doesn't have to be a big one we can pull, pull this frame of brood right here once we take the queen off of it and we literally can shake two frames just shake the bees and make a split and something i want to tinker around with is getting a frame of eggs and then shaking like three or four frames of bees onto those that frame of eggs in a nuke box give them like a frame of brood like this and then give them a frame of food and then maybe uh, let them raise their own queen specifically off of those eggs so that they're all young um, well-nourished larvae and make high quality queens as a and that could be your split but good good colonies like this really need to reproduce it's just natural and then these bees are healthy right here oh my goodness what a good looking colony down in there. They're drawing wax. Not all of this was completely drawn last year. And so they're, you can see where they're drawing some new combs over into here. Check this out too. I've been experimenting with this because some of the issues that people have with uh, frame feeders is because they don't, um, they're not as user friendly. They can have some issues with drowning. I don't have issues with strong colonies like this. I don't need anything in there with a colony like this. Sure. 
I, I might lose 40 bees in there and they might drown be like, Tame, that's awful. This county's losing probably a thousand bees every day. They're huge. There's a lot of turnover. It's natural. So some of them naturally drown into that. However, um, throwing a couple stick floats down in there and then throwing a handful of straw um, really can help quite a bit. And what I love about frame feeders, um, like the ones I got from Motherload, is, you know, of course, this was a year or so ago, but I got a bunch of them for like five seventy-five shipped to my door, made in the USA. I mean, you can't beat that pricing. Some of those um, specialty feeders for hobbyists are are pushing thirty to forty bucks. You know, I just uh, I can't afford that across hundreds of colonies and. Um, I just, the, the bees clean that out. Whenever they're done with it, they can drain it, or I mean clean it after they've drained it. Look at this, they're drawing comb this time of the year. And that comb has been in there all winter long. They just put a really good wax coat on these frames right here. I'll leave a link down to Motherload if you wanna check out Motherload USA. Um, you know, I don't get paid for these plugs. Um, I just, I have my opinions and they are just that. So, you know, some people literally hate frame feeders and some of them are very good buddies of mine. So nothing wrong with that. Let's check this colony next to it and see what they're up to. I'll put the lid on here in a second. They'll be all right. That colony's so strong. Uh, this isn't going to hurt them. You can get into bees on days like this when they're this strong. Now this one was a little bit behind. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I said that. And there is some swarm cells down into here. And they are fixing to cap them. That's royal jelly right there. Look at this elongated cup. They're making it into a queen cell. And yeah, that, that was definitely one. Sorry, I can't do much in these gloves. I'm gonna swap spots with Laurel and they are really thinking about this quite heavily now this is a little bit of a different situation here what do you mean by that Cayman? well there's a good bunch of bees right here but look that's empty this is mostly empty this looks fairly empty but look at these frames up here it's foundation a lot of it let's open the lid up and look and before i do that I am going to throw this back together before these bees wear us out. I'm going to temporarily switch that over, the old switcheroo. All right, check that out. So same thing, I did some straw over here with the one and a half gallon mother load frame feeder. Woo, it's hot. <laughs> and that water is not. All right, so this is foundations. So even though this colony is the smallest one we've checked yet, it has the most developed cells, and that's because they haven't got to draw on this out yet, and they are running out of space, even though they're smaller. And they're starting to draw it out, but they're not quite there yet. And really what we need to do is get some combs and cut all of those cells out, and then we need to cut those, uh, cut those cells and we need to pull out the foundations really and give them some drawn comb but a lot of new beekeepers don't have drawn comb and this is a problem it's it's very tricky there's really not much you can do about it except draw combs where you can and as much as you can when you can do it so we're going to be talking about that more in a video that i'm going to call now i'll probably forget the title later but post honey flow a comb drawing. Uh, right after your honey flows over, a lot of beekeepers take their time getting their honey off. They're busy. I get it. Been there before. But if you can, pull it off immediately. Those colonies are still so powerful and then you can just feed them, feed them some very thin syrup and you can get them to draw out another deep or two deep boxes per hive. And boy, that helps you out in the future with all your splits, all your swarm management, all kinds of stuff. So this colony needs pulled back so gosh darn it i am going to be so busy this week and this is just a few colonies in this yard but they they have not capped them yet and this one should be a pretty easy fix 
basically slant, you know, cut down all the cells, and then I'm just going to give them comb, 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 comb all the way across, and, and they're going to have a lot more room. You can see where they've taken that food and they're expanding out those combs. Here's a quick little lesson uh, for anyone who's new to beekeeping. If it's brood comb, they will keep it a certain depth. And you can see that right here. With honeycombs, though, they'll, they'll draw it out much fatter. And so when we are doing honey supers exclusively for honey, we will only put nine drawn combs in there. And so we'll get more of this uh, fat comb action. So when we get that hot knife, we can just slice right on down there. It makes it real easy uh, to do all that. Wow. So this was supposed to be a short video. Um, gee whiz. Well, I got this comment recently, Cayman. I've been seeing you in bee suits. What's up? This weather's up. And this suit's keeping me from turning into a human pincushion. Hope you guys are having a good beekeeping season, or if yours is fixing to start, that it ends up being a good bee season for you. Our bees are looking good, but they need some TLC, and they need a little bit of hard work put into them. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them below.